So here we are at the Jacksonville Arboretum. Uh, for anyone who does not already know about this cool little spot, the Arboretum is in the Arlington area and it's uh, right off of Monument Road, so just uh, a short drive from the Regency Mall area. It actually is almost at the intersection of 9A, or I guess what's called the uh, 295 Beltway now, where it crosses over Monument. So we're going to take a little walk here. This is the uh, first trail that you come up on when you enter into the Arboretum. This actually uh, encircles the lake to my left. Uh, we'll see in a second. And the uh, ravines are to the right. Today is a uh, federal holiday, so lots of people out here today. It's a President's Day. So let's take a little stroll. Here you can see some of the ravines that are at the Arboretum. Yes, Florida does have hills and ravines in certain areas. If you'll remember from my video from several years back, I went to a uh, conservation area that was also ravines. Here you can see the lake. Man, let's keep moseying on down this trail. I apologize ahead of time if I seem a little winded. I didn't bring any water with me. And I came here on my motorcycle, so I had to sort of bundle up today to get here because it's a little cold while I'm riding. And it tends to make my mouth really dry. And then so of course, once I get here, I'm carrying around my leather jacket and everything. Here you can see the lake that I was talking about. See some people over there on the other side of the lake. This little uh, pier sort of dock they have there. It's nice. It's nice out here. We come out here fairly often, uh, not as often as I'd like, but and keep going. What's nice being that this is an arboretum is that there are um, markers around a lot of different areas describing the foliage and things that you see, um, explaining some of the uh, biological diversity. And they maintain it very well. They're always out here planting new things, uh, maintaining what's already out here. They make it uh, very available and accessible to people. See, here's another little I was talking about with the uh, QR code so you can scan it in with your smartphone there. It'll take you to a website and explain what it is you're looking at and some of the things that are around here. Moving on here to the Jones Creek Trail, shall we? This trail is about a third of a mile, and uh, my motorcycle boots, so it should be fun. Coming up on some people here. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Well, you know, that's
as you can see that's the trail that uh, we just left there that wraps around the lake so now we're going back here into the uh, woods a little bit further here we have some of our uh, ever-present bald cypress trees that we have in Florida they grow in these wet areas and they have roots that come up that you can see that uh, are known as cypress knees very cool so as we're going here I didn't bring my tripod with me to hold this so it's a little difficult and this is how my uh, actual camera video camera but as you can see it's it's a nice little little area out here There's something I'm not going to try walking across. Not today. There's a nice banana tree growing out here. The wild Florida banana trees. Let's move back here and go over across this little bridge. Bridge is almost like walking across the log, huh? And here's another view here up close of the cypress knees and the uh, cypress trees going into the water. We have, if you can really see it or not with the glare, I don't have any sort of uh, filter lens, but the uh, waters that we have here are uh, often called black waters and that's because of all the tannins from the pine trees and stuff as the water comes through these areas and drains through all the leaves and pine needles and it colors the water black and the water is extremely salty saltier than the ocean at least it tastes like it is. Not that you should drink it, but I've had it in my mouth from being in the water, so. There goes some fish. Just missed a big one come through there. This is what a lot of the uh, scrub forests and woods and stuff in Florida, at least Northeast Florida area, looks like. How you doing? How are you today? All right. Just now filming around, huh? Yeah. All right. We well, <laughs> making some YouTube videos. The I read them. Sounds good. It's a day for oh yeah. You. Here's the other side of the log that I wouldn't walk across. And this is one of our wild cherry trees that we have here in Florida. I know that because it says wild cherry. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Here today. It's 
it's more than I think that I've ever seen out here. So here we go around the other little loop here. This is nice. This is a February and it's in the 70s today. It's a little nut. There's lots of nuts in Jacksonville. There was one on a tree. I'm not talking a whole lot because I'm trying to let you uh, sort of experience, if you can hear it, is some of the sounds of the wildlife. And we, of course, you still hear the traffic in the background. We're not too far from a small airport too, so every once in a while you hear things there. Here's another little informational thing. The Upland Mixed Forest is what this is considered. We have witch hazel, persimmon, sweet gum, longleaf pine, white oak, pigment hickory, magnolia, which is the state tree, and chinka pen. Those uh, people who do practice hoodoo will also recognize some uses and some names there. Here's our little scenic area. The whole thing's scenic, but this little sitting area. A little bench here. I'll lay my jacket down, rearrange it. So, it's a nice sunny day. It's bright. There's uh, really no clouds in the sky. Uh, it's just a nice day to be out here. So, if y'all are enjoying it, I've still got a little bit ways to go. I'm not not completely done around this sloop, but almost there. So the angle from this stream over here. So Even in the midst of the city, we still have a lot of these nice areas to go into and get close to nature again and take little relaxing strolls. This is a lot like the areas that uh, I would normally camp in, in the forest, look a lot like this. You have a nice ground cover, little birds. Um, this is more of a moisture area, as you can see all the, the ferns and the uh, palmetto scrub here. Some areas are so thick with palmetto, I often think of the uh, first settlers that came through here, not the natives. but people that came into this area and what they had to contend with with some of these uh, wild plants especially these wild bright orange plastic fences that grow out here those are killers good thing in the fall there they turn orange so you don't walk into them so 
but here's another little marker. It's uh, cinnamon, cinnamon fern. These are the kind we have the most around here, it seems. And of course our vines that take over everything. We have kudzu that grows out here. This is not kudzu, but they uh, will blanket whole areas along with these two. These are kind of, I believe these are invasive species. These are elephant ears and they're actually kind of hard to get rid of if you have them growing in your yard and stuff because they have a, a giant uh, bulb that they grow from. Come uh, to another little footbridge. Uh, swift moving water under us. This is the bottomland hardwood hammock. They say it could be the oldest natural community type in Florida. And on this little sign, we have a walking stick, which are also everywhere out here. This is a tiny one. Oh, excuse me. This is a praying mantis. That's so small. It looks like a walking stick. This is actually a young praying mantis. Hello. Some of my favorite places to come out and just relax and it's very meditative even with a lot of people here um, you still have the ability to kind of lose yourself and relax and what we have over here Oh, I saw something sticking up there. See that sticking up right there? Maybe, right there. And at first it looked like it was either a turtle's head or a snake head. We have lots of poisonous snakes around these moist areas here in Florida. We have water moccasins, especially. Very, very prevalent. And they're also very territorial. They're not a snake that shies away from people at all. They will be very aggressive. I've been out in swampy areas metal detecting and I've actually had them crawl over my feet. Not, not such a pleasant thing. Some uh, shamrocks in bloom. In February. It's a great thing about being in the south, some of these warmer areas here like this. You uh, get to enjoy this year round. And that, if you can hear it, sounds like a hawk. It could be an osprey, but more than likely it's a hawk. Actually, it could even be a, an eagle. Let's wander over here and see if we can see. I don't think there's a way to get through here without... No, there's really not. Anyway, there's a... Uh, if you can see it in the video or not, these utility poles here, these big concrete ones, and the hawks, and the eagles, and the ospreys all hang around on top of them. We have a lot of all of them here. Ospreys, more of a a lot of people call them a water eagle. Um, the uh, the hawks and the great bald eagles here are very prevalent all over. We're fortunate to have lots of really interesting raptors, as well as, of course, owls, which are one of my favorites. Lots of different owls.
So we're going to continue this way. There's a path that goes there, but that goes back to uh, the lake loop. And here's a fern. Sort of a fiddlehead at this point. Which uh, certain fiddleheads at times aren't edible. Here's a neat little information marker about some of the insects. And there's the brown mantis, which we just saw a minute ago. Sounds like a superhero. The monarchs, when I lived in California out west, the, uh, well obviously California out west from here, the monarchs would migrate through there. And at certain times of the year during their migration, everything would just be covered in monarch butterflies. And they're protected species, of course, are making their way to South America and uh, during these migrations. So you weren't allowed to touch them or anything like that. It's just really cool. More vines, Tarzan vine. Let's walk over here. And this is pawpaw trees. It's like this one kind of met its demise, but you can see it's uh, still living. It's just fallen over and only part of it is uh, growing in the ground anymore. People say they're going to the pawpaw patch. This is where they're going. are some of our wild grapes, grape vines. It looks like a, could be a muscadine. There's several different varieties that we have wild. Oh, and look, I almost walked right by it. There is a, uh, see it here or not? This is a black snake. Some people call them a black racer. I have another video of some of these mating. But you see how large it actually is. It's uh, really nice snakes, are very fast. My brother and I used to catch them in our yard a lot. Let's just walk on the other side over here, see? There we go. Look how long he is. Pretty cool. So that's our first snake that we've seen. They don't mess with you, you don't mess with them. They usually run away from you. Some people call them racers because they're, um, they'll, they'll actually kind of come at you. It seems like they're racing towards you. I'll stop and they'll get up and they put their their head up in the air and look like they're looking around. Uh, but if you just stop and you go back towards them, they uh, quickly run away. <laughs> they're not venomous. They have a small mouth. They eat things like small rodents and frogs because we have lots of tree frogs. Insects like grasshoppers. There's some more ravine area. Looking down creek down there, more scrub. All right. Now see, that was a, just a black snake. That kind of gives you an idea of, you know, the fact you have to be pretty vigilant when you're walking, even in a place like this. Sometimes, especially in a place like this, because it's surrounded by the city and it kind of conglomerates a lot more species into a smaller area. And we have rattlesnakes and pygmy rattlesnakes. And you see pygmy rattlesnakes 
a lot more often out here in Florida than you do uh, regular rattlesnakes. And the pygmy rattlesnakes are small, but very venomous. And they, I seem to run across them on the trails more than anything else. So if you're hiking out here, walking around in flip-flops, a lot of people do. And you aren't paying attention, you can easily walk on one, get your toe bit, and you just got bit by a rattlesnake. So we don't have much further left of this area here. We're coming up to the end of the trail, of this particular trail. There's quite a few trails out here. This one happens to be uh, a third of a mile. And it's, like you see, it's a little up and down, not very much. It's a well-maintained trail. They have a... Uh, Another trail that is a little bit more rugged, not kept up quite as much, and uh, it's, they say it's a mile, it seems honestly a little bit longer than that, but it goes into the, the deep woods area. Uh, here's a cool thing. See this vine? Comes up from down there up to the tree and comes back down and goes all the way up there to those trees. I'm gonna play Tarzan across that. Not me. These are our orange flag trees. You have to be careful of them because they're made of metal and they hurt if you fall on them. Here's another little trail, the Aralia Trail Loop. Let's go on that, shall we? I know I'm slacking with getting a lot of these outdoor videos. I haven't done it in quite a while. But uh, hopefully I'll start doing some more here again. I got hit in April last year by an SUV while I was bicycling. So it's been a little bit harder. And this is the area where we were hearing the uh, raptor screeching earlier. It's on one of these holes here. Necessarily, we want to walk all the way across here. Does this go back through here? Oh, look, it does. This is an area I've not been to before. This is brand new. All I have with me to survive out here is the clothes on my back couple knives and my cell phone. So, let's just hope nothing happens. Because this was all just about a, a quick little jaunt. Now we're in prime rattlesnake territory. Just 
I saw sorts of wild grapevines that I'm going by. They're all young. Let's see, they're all through here, lining like this whole undergrowth area. It's cabbage palm. Oyster shells. And lots of oyster shells all over the place in Florida. Um, there are areas where Native Americans also uh, had made mounds. They called them oyster mittens. <clears throat> it was like their trash dump of oysters, or the oyster shells. This is back here towards the entrance area to the Arboretum. You can see the road that's out there. This is obviously less of a maintained little area here. Probably doesn't honestly see very much traffic. So here's one of our magnolia trees. They have, I don't know if you can really see the lighting. They have really, here's a, here's a baby one. Really big, broad, waxy leaves. And uh, doesn't seem to be any on the ground here. But they also have a seed pod. Oh, there's one. There you see the, uh, the seed pods. They have really cool bright red seeds. And uh, a lot of people use the seed pods for, like, you know, protection, peaceful home, that sort of thing. It's a nice big tree here. This is a interesting little thing here waiting for Snakes to just jump out at you, huh? Or fall on you. There's some blooming foliage. Looks like the loop is starting to loop back around. Going through all these little oak saplings that are everywhere. Now this is cool. Check this out. This is a tree that has fallen over and has an exposed Great system, but it looks sort of like some sort of wall. I hear lizards scurrying in the bushes. These are where tires are born. Not really. I think this is where tires, these are where tires come to die. They wander out here, lose momentum, and just fall and are left. No one ever comes to save the tires. That was a woodpecker. Now if you heard it, making its laugh. In the background, that noise was a woodpecker. 
the Woody Woodpecker laughing. Hmm. There's a path here. Path here. Let's just keep going this way. Here's another, uh, this is a holly tree. These also grow everywhere out here. We have whole forests pretty much along the coastal areas, especially near the beaches that um, have tons of holly trees. And I'll just say they're not fun to walk through. They have little spikes on the end of the leaves and they're very painful. They have red holly berries that grow on them that the birds like to eat though and that's fun because the birds get drunk and you get to see them acting strangely. Falling over on themselves and that sort of thing. So we are at the end of this loop here. Well, that one apparently is just two cascades. Hmm. Cascades to me says waterfall. We'll leave that for another time. I don't really recall seeing these uh, trails listed on the map at the entrance. Uh, I'm gonna stop here and show you this hole, oh, this hole. Um, more than likely that is a gopher tortoise hole. It is a uh, protected turtle that we have here. And they tend to have their um, nests like that throughout the forest you you find holes hmm do we want to go this way or want to go back up there let's go through here why not finish this loop I know we're getting taken all over the place in this video I'm kind of just going wherever attack butterflies coming at me Hugging pretty close to this uh, power line route here. So, I'm glad you decided to come along with me to walk through this nice little area. Jacksonville Arboretum, Jacksonville, Florida. If you happen to be in the area, you should definitely come check it out. It's a nice little place to just come have a hike. Bring some water. 
I usually do, but I just uh, honestly didn't think about it too much. I wasn't really planning on going to too many areas. But luckily there's a water fountain right at the entrance to all the trails here. And we are back to this part of the loop. And this is what actually heads out to the parking lot area to uh, the trailheads for all the other trails. See? Well, the sun's in the way, but Aralia Trail Loop. That's where we just were. Another little set bridge. Palm tree grove here that we're going through. Motorcycle way over. Wait, 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 there it is. Way over there. It's my motorcycle that I rode in here on. So I'll be back on in just a moment. You can see areas where they've done some burn. They do control burns. Get the underbrush cleared out through all these areas so there's. You know, wildfires and things. It's really common. Now we're out completely in the open on this trip here, so it's a perimeter trail. How you doing? I'm in a wet. <laughs> it's very nice today. All right, wrap it up here. Get a drink and head out.